I don't remember. But that's the reason. <laughs> good evening. Okay, good evening, teacher. Good, good evening. evening, teacher. Hi, how are you? I am fine. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Okay. Uh, you, teacher. How are you? Uh, how I'm doing are you good, today? thank you. A little tired, I but am fine. I'm ready for a class. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, let's begin. We're just going to um, just let me go full screen before we do anything else. Um, just a second, just a second. Okay, here. Just give me 30 seconds. No, not 30 seconds. That's too long. A little bit shorter than that. Okay. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Always remember to turn off your microphones. Okay. Okay, here we go. Can you see the screen I'm sharing? Yes, teacher. Great. Okay, thanks for... Confirming. <laughs> okay, um, I'm just going to call the attendance list. Just a second. Uh, it's here. Okay. Here we go. Today is March 1st. So um, when you hear your name, please let me know. Alejandro Jose Quintanilla Ayala. Present teacher. Thank you. Alicia Guadalupe Hernandez Romero. Present teacher. Thank you. Ana Filomena Mendoza. Good evening, teacher. Present. Good evening. Thank you. Ana Yanira Mendoza Godoy. Okay, we have a chat entry. Uh, okay. Okay, some of you have some problems with, with the camera. Okay, and also with the audio. Okay, so I have Iris Regina's message and also Miguel Angel Quintanilla. Okay, I get it. Okay, so, well, let's continue. Um, Ana Yanira Mendoza Godoy. Present Ana, teacher. Thank you. We have two Ana, Ana Mendozas here. It was one of Ana Filomena Mendoza and Ana Yanira Mendoza, right? <laughs> okay, Andrea Geraldine Sanchez. Present teacher. Thank you. Andrea Michelle Garcia. Present teacher. Thank you. <clears throat> Blanca Marisol Vargas Esteves. Present teacher. Thank you. Uh, Boris Martin Salinas. Boris Martin Salinas Quintanilla. Selina Yvette Gutierrez Osorio. Present. Thank you. Denis Isaías Gomez Rodas. Good evening, present. Good evening. Hi. Okay, Daisy Carolina Rodriguez Mejia. Present, teacher. Thank you. Eric Ernesto Linares Aguirre. Eric, Eric Ernesto Linares Aguirre? No. Okay. Erika, Erika Meidel Antonio Flores. Is Erika here? Francisco Alberto Lemus Guzman. Sorry, good evening, teacher. I'm here. Good evening. Present. Hi. I can barely see you <laughs> when the light's off. All right, Iris Regina, Iris sent a message. She says she has a problem with the camera, but you're here, right, Iris? Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, thank you. Jenny Elizabeth Santillana Cortez. Jenny Elizabeth Santillana Cortez. Jose Eraivin Enriquez. Present teacher. Thank you. 
Katia Graciela. Katia also sent me a message. I'm going to be listening because I can speak to my bad throat and we'll have a camera off. Okay, okay, Katia, <laughs> I get you. Thank you, Maritza Isabel Mendez Aguirre. Present teacher. Thank you. Miguel Ángel Quintanilla Tejada. Ah, Miguel Ángel sent me a message, I believe. I'm at work, I can be a listener. Okay, but uh, Miguel Ángel is here, right? Let me check the list. Miguel Ángel, yeah, he's here. Okay, Nadia Isolina Rodríguez Ramírez. Present teacher. Thank you very much. Noemi Alicia Estrada de Valle. Present teacher. Thank you very much. Ronald Antonio Luna López. Present teacher. Thank you. Saúl Antonio Hernández Torres. Present teacher. Thank you. Okay. All right, very good. Just uh, calling names again because some of you didn't answer. Boris Martín Salinas Quintanilla. Is Boris here? Boris? No, I don't think so. Uh, Eric Ernesto Linares. No. Erika Maydel Antonio Flores. I'm calling Eric and Erica. Jenny Elizabeth Santillana Cortez. Ya la vi a Jenny, que ahí está. Jenny Elizabeth, you here? Okay. We're going to start then, everybody. Ah, Jenny says present. Thank you. Okay, well, let's do this. Okay, everybody uh, have a chat entry again. Jenny says, I have a problem. Okay. Um, to, uh, this is Inglés Pre Avanzado, Modulo 1. And this is me, Ivan Doñan, at your service once again. And this is session number three. And today's March 1st of 2023. Erika says present. Okay, Erika, thank you. All right. Let's do it. Okay, y you guys had some homework yesterday. Okay, and that's what we're going to check. So what was the homework? You had to do this exercise, which is fair work, but well, you have to do it individually. And this is knowledge check 1.4. So match the information in columns A and B, then rewrite each pair to form one sentence. Use a relative pronoun if necessary. Okay, so there's an example right here. Just a moment. I'm just going to rearrange the animations because this is probably better if I do it like this. Let's see, this is one, two, should be three. Just a second, four, should be five, six, seven, just a moment. Eight, this should be nine. And this should be 10. Okay, so just rearranging the animations, okay, so that it looks, that it works better. So uh, that's the homework for you. Match the information in columns A and B, then rewrite each pair to form a sentence. One sentence, use a relative pronoun if necessary. So there's an example. Number one goes, I don't want to have a partner. Okay, that's the first sentence. The second sentence is D. I have nothing in common with this person. So you have a sentence like this. I don't want to have a partner that I have nothing in common with, or I don't want to have a partner who I have nothing in common with, or simply, I don't want to have a partner I have nothing in common with. What about number two? You have to tell me the correct sentence that matches the first sentence, and then you have to tell me the new sentence using a relative clause. So I'm checking homework here. Number two, who wants to try? Noemi Alicia, then Ana Filomena, you go with number three. Okay, then Dennis, you go with number four. Okay, pero mantenga la manita levantada porque si no se me olvida. Okay, Noemi, number two, please. He'd like to meet people. And these people have a good sense of humor. Humor, okay, I'd like to meet people humor. and these people have a good sense of humor. That's good. Okay. Now, um, what is the new sentence using the relative clause? Noemi? Sí. 
Okay, but what about the new sentence? Like this one, right? I'd like to meet people, sentence number one. Sentence number two, these people have a good sense of humor. If you put both of them together, what do you have? I don't. Okay, no problem. Maybe Anna Filomena can help us, Anna? Yes, teacher. Okay, number two, uh, what do you have when you put it together? Maybe I... I like to meet people who have a good sense of humor of. Okay, um, good. The only problem is the preposition. You don't say a good sense of humor of, you say a good sense of humor, just like that, because it doesn't come after a verb. So I'd like oh. to meet people who have a good sense of humor. But teacher, I mm -hmm. put that, if, that uh, answer in the platform. And ah, really? It me wrong, yes. Because it's the mm, same. Let me check. <laughs> okay. I don't know. I don't know. Let me check. Um, what is that? 1.4. Okay. I'd like to, be, to meet people. Let me say. I don't know if I am wrong. Who have a good sense of humor. Um, according to the answer that I'm getting from the platform, you could use any of the following. Let's see, according to this, okay, we're going to check them together. So I'd like to meet people who have a good sense of humor, or I'd like to meet people that have a good sense of humor, or I'd like to meet people who have a good sense of humor, or, period, I would like to meet people who have a good sense of humor. Okay, <laughs> any of these should be correct. Okay. Aquí nada más um, hay que tener maybe, un poquito... I uh -huh. maybe, uh -huh. maybe I change because I try uh, like a 10 times. 10 times, oh my God. Yeah, because uh, in some case is is wrong because the, the, the point or... The period, right at the end. The, pe the period, mm -hmm. the end, or maybe the, the contractions. Mm -hmm. so the exactly. Computer. Mm -hmm. The thing is, you have to be very careful because if you use one character, if one character is different from the answer that is programmed, you will have the wrong answer. So you have to be very careful. I'm telling you this because sometimes people come and they say, I the, like this, for example, they say, I'd like to meet people, blah, blah, blah. And they tell me sometimes, teacher, I am sure I have the correct answer. But sometimes this is what happens. This is not an apostrophe. Oh, yeah. This is an accent, you know, symbol. So this is an example of one thing that can go wrong. Sometimes the problem is that, for example, between two words, like, for example, like and meet, people leave two spaces like this. One, two, one, two. That could be another problem. Sometimes is that you don't have the final period. Sometimes, okay, for example, you forget one letter, okay, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you have to type in exactly, exactly, you know, all the characters that are necessary for the answer. If one is missing, you will have a problem. If you give an extra one, you have a problem. So yes. that's the only thing about you know this type of exercises. So you just have to make sure. Uh, you type it in correctly. And uh, if after that it doesn't work, well, let me know and we'll see what we can do. Okay. So yeah, okay. I'd like to meet... Okay, you're welcome. I'd like to meet people who or that have a good sense of humor. Dennis is a yes. Number three. Well, I have a, a little doubt, but I'm going to mm -hmm. try it. Okay. I... I prefer a roommate that this person is quite inconsiderate. Okay, so it's letter G, right? I prefer a roommate. This person is quiet and considerate. That is good. However, uh, there is a problem with the new sentence. There are too many words. You need to eliminate some words. Two words in particular. Your, your microphone is off. Um, I don't know. I don't like to be with people. Ah, that... what, what, sorry, sorry. What about number three? What is what is the full sentence? 
Number three. Mm -hmm, number three, yes. Uh, I prefer a roommate mm -hmm. that person is quite inconsiderate. That's a problem. Too many words. You need to use one or two. Uh, well, you have to eliminate one or two words from that sentence. I have a chat entry right here. I am driving. Only listen. Okay, Boris. <laughs> Thank you, Boris. I'm going to um, register your attendance. Boris Martin. Okay. So, uh, Dennis. Okay, uh, maybe someone can help us here. Okay. Dennis has the right answer. The only problem is the new sentence. Let's see, Saul. Okay, I think the correct answer is I prefer a roommate who have a good. Uh, I prefer a roommate uh -huh. who are who who is warm and sensitive. Who is warm and sensitive? Okay, I guess it's possible. This this combination is possible. However, we have already determined that it's letter G. So I prefer a roommate and then this person is quiet and considerate. So Dennis got it right. Uh, yes. The only problem was the new sentence. There was a little problem right there. Let's see what Jenny Elizabeth has to say about it. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Uh, the number three. Number three. Yeah. What is the new um, sentence? Number three. Mm -hmm. I said a roommate that is quiet and considerate. That is quiet and considerate. Yeah, more like that. I prefer a roommate who is quiet and considerate, or I prefer a roommate that is quiet and considerate. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. What about number four? Who wants to uh, tell me the answer to number four? Number four. Okay. Number four. You can go for it. Okay. I don't like to be with people that I don't comfortable around. So you say, I don't like to be with people, uh, letter F, I don't feel comfortable around these people. So again, what was the complete sentence? Can you repeat it? Okay. Uh, I don't like to be with people that I don't feel comfortable, comfortable around. Yeah, I don't like to be with people that I don't feel comfortable about or who I don't feel comfortable about or I don't feel comfortable about, just like that. By the way, I should probably just include this. I forgot. Okay, here. Because that one is optional. Okay, you can just say, I don't like to be with people I don't feel comfortable around. Okay, thank you, Jenny. That was good. Um, what about number five? Who wants to try number five? Maritza. Good evening. Hello. Um, for me, it's um, letter A. Letter, letter A. E. Letter E. <laughs> letter E. Oh, okay. Letter E is different from letter A. Okay. <laughs> So what's the, okay, you have, I want to discuss my problems with friends and letter E is these people are warm and sensitive. Okay, yes. so um, what is the, what is the new sentence? I want to discuss my problems with friends that are warm and sensitive. Okay, yeah, that's right. I want to discuss my problems with friends that are warm and sensitive or who are warm and sensitive. Correct, very good. Thank you, Maritza. What about number six? Who wants to try number six? Saul, okay, Saul. Okay, I think the correct option is letter B. Letter B. So I'd rather have a boss. Letter B. This person has good leadership qualities. Good. What about the new sentence? Uh, okay, the new sentence could be: I prefer to have a. I rather I rather have a boss who have a who have a who have good leadership qualities. I'd rather have a boss who has good leadership qualities or that has good leadership qualities. That's correct. Thank you, Saul. Very good. And the last one, number seven, who wants to try? 
Number seven is easy. There's only one more option, <laughs> one option left. Mm -hmm. So, okay, Jenny Elizabeth, let's do this. Okay. Is I prefer to have teachers yeah. who they skip these are organized and intelligent. Okay, uh, can you repeat it, please? You say I prefer to have teachers who are organized and intelligent. Who these are? Is that what you told me? These are, uh -huh. mm, uh, so that are organized and intelligent. Okay, that's more like it. Okay, so number seven. <laughs> I prefer to have teachers that are organized and intelligent. Okay, organized. organized. Mm -hmm. So, or I prefer to have teachers who are organized and intelligent. There you go. Okay, uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Ana Yanira wants to say something. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, okay, Ana Yanira. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Um, I have a question. Mm -hmm. What's your question? I, I, I can see that uh, not e all of them, the sentences, we use uh, the preposition uh, prepositions uh -huh. at the end, uh -huh. only to that case with and around. Mm -hmm. And I am confused about, uh, because when I read the, 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 the complete uh, both sentence, mm -hmm. uh, uh, maybe in the number three. I number three. Okay. Uh -huh. Who, who, or that is quiet and considerate. Mm -hmm. And when I try to translate, for mm -hmm. me, it not sense like is or that are, because I I think will be a uh, preferiría un compañero mm -hmm. que sea calmado y considerado. Mm -hmm. And I I I thought that uh, it. Maybe better put B, that B. That B. Be quiet. Not necessarily. Okay, not necessarily because that's another another type of uh, another type of structure. It's possible. Sometimes you can use the verb in base form after that, but mm -hmm. not in this case because this is a relative clause. So um, I believe that every you have time. Like, mm -hmm, yeah. Every time we need to. To use that form or verb is a uh, R uh -huh. has. The, the thing is, um, in a relative clause, you can use a verb in present and past in future. The verb can be conjugated in any tense. So you don't necessarily have to use it in base form. Let's see if you can use it in base form only in present simple for I, you, we, and they. Otherwise, you but, will have to conjugate it. But if I use uh, be, it's wrong. Mm -hmm. It will be wrong. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. It will be okay. wrong. You have to say, I prefer a roommate who is quiet and considerate or that is quiet and considerate. Just like that. Similar to number five. Okay. I want to discuss my problems with people who are or that are warm and sensitive. And you don't say who be or that be. Mm -hmm. The correct form is who are, that are. It all depends on what you're talking about. For example, number three, I prefer a roommate. It's only one person. It's he or she. So it's only yeah. one person, a person that is. He is, she is. And number five, you have, I want to discuss my problems yeah. with friends, plural. That means they. Okay. So they are friends who are warm and sensitive or friends that are warm and sensitive. Maybe my confusion is mm -hmm. when, if I translate the mm -hmm. sentence, mm -hmm. I want to discuss my program with friends who, uh, que sean. Que sean. Que sean, no, no, que son. Uh-huh, uh-huh. In this case, uh, if, if I translate, mm -hmm. uh, for separate the, the sentences, mm -hmm. uh, who, uh, que son, mm -hmm. who are. But the no thing is... Sean. Uh, the thing is, well, one thing to keep in mind is that uh, English and Spanish are two different languages. Yes. Uh -huh. So sometimes uh, sometimes it is effective to translate some of the sentences. And in some mm -hmm. other cases, you will find that they don't really match. Okay. This is one of those okay. cases. Uh -huh. okay. But yeah, in a relative clause, you have to use a verb. 
uh, the verb can go in any tense as long as it is appropriate to the sentence. In this case, okay. present simple. Thank you, teacher. Okay. Jenny has company. <laughs> okay, you're welcome. Francisco, do you have a question? Yeah, teacher, I am sorry. Uh, next it's okay. Oh, don't my, worry. My... Ya estaba preparado lo que iba a decir, sorry. <laughs> For my ignorance, uh, please no, remember me. You don't have to. You don't have to apologize. <laughs> it's it's a class. We're here to learn. Okay, so um, uh, please and remember me. What is the um uh, translate the I will uh, in Spanish, please? I not remember that. Um, can you? I'm sorry. Can can you can you repeat that? Oh yeah. Um. Uh, um. Uh, you remember me, please, teacher. Uh, what is this? Uh, translate the I will in Spanish. I don't remember exactly what is. Where is it? Bueno, que, uh, is, I have no recuerdo it, it... qué significa I will. Uh, ahí va a disculpar. Pero, <laughs> pero la, la palabra es que no, no, no entiendo cómo, cómo va. <laughs> Can you put it in the chat? <laughs> y de, pues, I, y de, I, I, I will. Okay. I, oh, yeah, okay, sorry. okay, okay, okay. No, 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 don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. It's fine. Okay, so this is, I would. Yeah. I'm but sorry, it depends, please. but it depends. No, you don't have to apologize. <laughs> don't apologize. <laughs> we're learning, we're learning. All questions are valid. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> so. Miedo de equivocarme, por eso casi no hablo. <laughs> hombre, no, hombre, para nada. Al contrario, si, no, si nos equivocamos, aprendemos. Del, del error también se aprende. A veces uno comete un error y luego dice, ay, Se acuerda del error que cometió y de ahí aprende. Okay, um, the thing with this is that mm -hmm. the apostrophe D can have two different meanings. Okay, it could mean would, and it can also mean, who knows the other one? Nobody? Had. Okay, had, that's right. <laughs> okay, it is would or had. Ah, okay. But how do you recognize the difference? Okay, it's easy. Uh, Look, if you have apostrophe D and then you have a verb in base form, okay, then it is definitely would. And if you have apostrophe D and then you have a verb in past participle, then it is definitely had. For example, Say, if I had enough money, I would, I don't know, <clears throat> buy a new car, just to give it, to have an idea. So when you say I, in this case, it means I would. Why? Because you have apostrophe D, and after that, you have a verb in base form. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's see. I um, ran into Sonia last night. Now, let me see. This is not a good example. Okay, maybe you can say, I'd seen that movie before. Okay, in this case, apostrophe D is had because after that you have a verb in past participle. That's how you recognize them. Two chat entries right here. Nadia is okay. Nadia, Nadia, Francisco, Noemi. Ah, is it the same, the same question that you have, or Nadia and Noemi? You're 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 sending some messages right here. Okay. Um, ah, okay. <laughs> okay. I hope it's clear then. All right. So that's the idea. Okay, everybody. Okay, thank teacher. you. Thank okay. you, teacher. You're welcome. You're welcome. All right. So here's what we're going to do. Now, by the end of this class, this is the next part, the, the next objective, 1.5, we need to hurry because we don't have much time. Participants will learn adjectives that describe personal characteristics. Take a look. Word power, personalities. Match the words with the definitions, then decide which words are positive and which are negative. Write P or N next to each word. For example, then you have sociable sociable is letter f a person who enjoys being with other people is sociable and is it positive or negative we'll say it's positive right it's good to be with other people it's good to socialize with other people what about number two intolerant who knows this one intolerant 
Saúl. Que okay, can be letter A, a person letter... who won't accept other people's difference. Correct. Is that positive or negative? Negative. It's negative, yeah. Okay. A person who won't accept other people's differences. That's intolerant. Thank you, Saúl. What about number three? Modest. Who knows? This is section 1.6 of the platform, by the way. So number three, modest. Who knows the answer? I. Noemi. Letter I. Letter I. Someone who doesn't brag about his heart. Accomplishment. Accomplishment, yeah. It's someone who doesn't brag, okay? Someone who doesn't brag. Do you know the meaning of brag? Brag means alardear, right? Someone who doesn't brag about his or her accomplishments. Mm -hmm. Alguien que no alardea de sus logros. So is it uh, positive or negative, Noemi? Um, negative. Negative. Okay. <laughs> well, I guess it depends on the point of view. Uh, the answer that I have right here is it's actually positive, right? Okay, someone who's modest, okay, humble, someone who doesn't brag about his or her accomplishments. Okay, so it's positive. But I guess in some cases it can be seen as negative. Okay, thank you, yeah. Noemi. So what about number four? You're welcome. Who knows this one? Number four, please. Let's try to participate. Dennis. Temperamental. Uh, somebody that is temperamental is a person who has unpredictable or irregular moods. Yeah, someone who has unpredictable or irregular moods. Is it positive or negative, Dennis? Negative. Negative, yeah. Yeah, it's a temperamental person. Thank you. Very good. Nadia Isolina, number five, egotistical. What's egotistical? Okay, in my um, I, in my opinion, it's a letter uh, C. Letter, letter C. C. Yes. Uh, egotistical. Egotistical. Uh, some someone who expresses a very high opinion of him or her herself. Yeah. Is a yeah. negative. It's a negative trait. Correct. Yeah, egotistical is someone who expresses a very high opinion of him or herself. Okay, when a person says like, yeah, I am great, I am excellent, right? I am better than everybody. Okay, that's an egotistical person. Okay, so um, what about the egotistical person? Sorry, Selena Yvette, okay, number six, easygoing. Thank you. Easygoing. It's a person who doesn't worry much or get angry easily. Okay, that's good. Is it uh, positive or negative? Positive. Let's say positive. Okay. <laughs> to some people, this may seem negative, but yeah, let's say positive. Thank you, Selena. That's correct. What about number seven? Stingy. Stingy. What is the meaning of stingy? Who has the answer? Noemi. That's stingy. Stingy. Uh, letter B. Stingy. Mm -hmm. Someone who does like giving this, the people on the rules. Ungenerous. Yeah, someone who ungenerous. doesn't like giving things to people. Ungenerous. That's stingy person. In El Salvador, we say? Colo, right? Colo. So that's a stingy Colo. person. Okay, so is it positive negative. or negative? Yeah, it's definitely negative. negative. Okay. <laughs> okay, number... Valero del codo. <laughs> yeah, totally. What about number eight? Who knows the answer to this one? Ana Filomena Mendoza. Unreliable. What's that? Uh, your, your microphone is off. Sorry. It's okay. Don't worry. It happens to me <laughs> also. <laughs> I think there is a number E. Letter E. Letter E. Yeah. A person who doesn't do what he or she promised. 
promised. Okay, correct. Mm -hmm. So unreliable is a person who doesn't do what he or she promised. If you say like, hey, can you do me this favor? And you say, yes, totally, I will do it for you. And then you don't do it, you are unreliable, okay? Because you didn't yeah. do what you promised, okay? Is that positive or negative? Negative. It's negative. Yeah, totally. Thank you. And the last one, supportive. What about supportive? Who knows the answer? Selena, your, your hand is up. Do you want to participate? No. <laughs> okay, so who has Sorry. number nine? It's okay. <laughs> Don't worry. Don't worry. It's okay. Maritza. It's easy, teacher. <laughs> easy. It's the only one left. <laughs> Letter D. Mm -hmm. Supportive is someone who is helpful and encouraging. Okay, that's supportive. Is that positive or negative, Maritza? It's positive. It's a positive trait, definitely. Okay, there you go, some vocabulary. So just for pronunciation, you have sociable, intolerant, modest, temperamental, egotistical, easygoing, stingy, unreliable, and supportive. We have a chat entry here. Unreliable, Nadia says. What, what is unreliable? Nadia is asking. Okay, so Nadia, unreliable. Imagine that you ask me a favor, okay? Bueno, yo creo que soy un poco unreliable porque ayer me pidieron un favor y no lo terminé haciendo. Se me olvidó. <laughs> me dijeron, manda la información, teacher, y no la mandé. La voy a mandar ahora, no se preocupen. Bye. Ejemplo perfecto. Okay, so you have unreliable. You ask me to do something. Teacher, please send me the presentation. Send me the information. And I say, yes, I will do it tonight. But I don't do it. Okay, so I am unreliable because I don't, I, I didn't do what I promised. Okay, that's the thing. Pero conste que se me olvidó. <laughs> Tenía otras cosas que hacer, pero se lo voy a mandar. Tonight. <laughs> si ya hoy no la mando, entonces de verdad, I am very unreliable. Okay, but I will. Via WhatsApp. That's the meaning of unreliable. Okay. Unreliable es que no se puede contar con alguien porque no hace las cosas que promete hacer. O las cosas que uno le pide que haga. Unreliable. O simplemente que no funciona. Por ejemplo, si a si usted le falla su computadora y le dicen, va a tener una reunión muy importante, mejor no ocupe esa computadora porque la computadora es unreliable, porque le falla, o el carro le falla, unreliable. No, I was thinking. <laughs> okay, so um, now that we have the vocabulary right here, we can move on. And we have this activity, okay, so what is this? Uh, Dennis, uh, do you want to participate? Or do you have a question? Yes, I have a question. Um, okay. uh, uh, what's the difference between stingy and cheap? Uh, stingy and cheap are very similar. Okay. Actually, well, they are like synonyms. You say, this person is stingy. This person is cheap. Okay. Both have the same meaning. Uh, it's pretty much the same. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Also, you can call cheap a person who doesn't like to spend money. For example, somebody who buys things of low quality because they are cheaper. You said, this is cheap. Okay. So, uh, Nadia, do you have a question? Yes, teacher. I have a question, question? about question? the word unreliable. Unreliable. Uh, ah. um, unreliable. Uh, we can use uh, this word for the personal or the things? Yes, both. Oh, Persons or person. people, people or things. Both. Mm -hmm. okay, a thank a you. person can be unreliable. A car can be unreliable. A computer can be unreliable. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you, you can use it for people and things. Okay, so what are we going to do? We're going to try to do this exercise quickly because we don't have much time. So um, can you remember the definitions? Take turns talking about the adjective. So a sociable person is someone who enjoys being with other people. What about number two? Who can tell me? Intolerant. Now, using a relative clause. Mm-hmm. 
Number two. Okay, Dennis, then Anna Filomena, and then Jenny. Keep your hands up, okay, so that I can I can remember. So Dennis, uh, an intolerant is a person who who won't accept other people's difference. An intolerant person is someone who won't accept other people's differences. Okay, good. Thank you, Anna Filomena. Number three, a mother's per a mother's person. A mother's person is someone who doesn't brag about his or her accomplishments. A mother's person is someone who doesn't brag about his or her accomplishments. That's correct. Thank you very much. Jenny Elizabeth, number four, temperamental. Temperamental is a person. Well, you say uh, probably better like this. A temperamental person is someone. A, a, okay. a temperamental person is, is a person who, who has some predictable Okay, so a temperamental person is someone who has unpredictable or irregular moods. Okay, there you go. How do you say unpredictable? Unpredictable. Unpredictable. Unpredictable, okay. yeah. Okay, welcome. Uh, Saul, number five, ego egotistical. Okay, egotistical person is someone who expresses a very high opinion of him or herself. Yeah, an egotistical person is someone who expresses a very high opinion of him or herself. Thank you, Saul. Number six, easy going. Who has the answer to this? Saul left. I oh, know, there he is. <laughs> okay, so number six, who wants to try? Filomena. Uh, um... Easy going person is it's a person. Someone. It's a person. Mm, yes. Mm, you can say someone also because. Um, yes, I mean, it, it can be. An egotistical, easy going. Egotistical per, sorry, an ego, easy going person is a person. It sounds kind of repetitive. So you can say it's someone. So it's yeah. It's a person. Who so, doesn't. Uh huh. Who doesn't worry much, worry much or get angry easily? Okay, so an, an easygoing person is someone who doesn't worry much or get angry easily. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There you go. Thank you. Thank you, Filomena. Now, let me, number seven, stingy. Number seven, stingy. It's a person who has a um, predictor of irregular moves. Mm, no, Ooh. that's a, that's a temperamental person. This one is a bit different. Seven. Oh, excuse uh -huh. me. It's okay. Seven. Uh, someone who does like give things to people uh -huh. and generous. And generous. Okay. So generous. a stingy person is someone who doesn't like giving things to people. Okay. Or someone who is ungenerous. Okay. Thank you very much. Number eight, unreliable. What about unreliable? Using a relative clause. Who can tell me? Please. Maritza. Um, un, okay, un, unreliable. Mm -hmm. An unreliable person is someone who doesn't like giving things no <laughs> no that's a stingy uh, person <laughs> oh I, I confused don't worry um, an unreliable person is someone who doesn't do what he or she promised yeah an unreliable person is someone who doesn't do what he or she promised good very good and number nine Thank you, Maritza. Number nine, who wants to try? A supportive person. Always remember, raise your hand. Press your digital hand. Sri Daivet. Thank you. 
asking. Uh, supportive person. Supportive person is someone who is helpful and encouraging. That is correct. A supportive person is someone who is helpful and encouraging. That's right. Very good. Okay. Nice. We finished another exercise, and now we have learned some vocabulary. So uh, next, we have uh, section one point seven. It's a knowledge check. And uh, it's a listening activity. The listening activity is actually in, let me check. Okay, just a moment. Should be here. Okay. So uh, to do this exercise, let me show you. Now let's check right here, personalities. Okay, so you have based on the audio program in section 1.6. So to do this, you have to watch the video that is here, personalities. So there's a video, okay? And based on what you hear, then you can do this. But I also have the audio here, so we can do it together, all right? So what are we going to do? Oh, I hear music. <laughs> um, okay. Always remember to deactivate your microphones. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Based on the audio program in section 1.6 about personalities of Andrea, James, and Mr. Johnson, select the best statement that describes each one of them. I'm sorry, I have it here. Just let me find it. I have the track. Um, okay, found it. I believe this is the one. Just, okay. Okay. There it is. Animations, none. Okay, I'm going to play the track. I want you to listen. Subanle un poquito el volumen porque suena bajito por algún motivo. Así que suban el volumen. Okay, turn up the volume, everybody. And I want you to listen. So which statement best describes Andrea? Andrea. Andrea is someone who is sociable and easygoing. Andre, Andre, le faltará. Andrea is someone who is egotistical and stingy, or Andrea is someone who's temperamental and unreliable. Let's listen to the track, and I want you to tell me which of the three sentences is correct. Let's do it. Andrea. So, have you seen Andrea lately? Yeah. Can you hear that? Uh, yes, so, it's oh, okay, <laughs> great, great, great. Thank you. Okay. Andrea. So, have you seen Andrea lately? Yeah, I see her pretty often. We work together at Cafe Latte. How's she doing? I've been meaning to call her. Well, to be honest, I've always thought she was a little difficult, but these days I find her impossible. What do you mean? Oh, you know how she is. She has such strong ideas about everything, and if you don't agree with her, she lets you know what she thinks of you. Yes, that's true. But that's why we love her, right? <sighs> I guess so. But she's changed a lot since she started college. She talks about herself all the time. And she always manages to mention how good she is at everything she does. Hmm. Maybe I won't call her after all. Okay, so what do you have? Is it the first one, the second one, or the third one? It's the third one. The third one, someone who's temperamental and unreliable. Actually, in this case, um, to be honest with you, you have the first one, the second one, but to be honest with you, they mentioned two characteristics. At the beginning, they, they basically imply that she's temperamental, okay? And also, at the end of the conversation, they imply that she's egotistical, okay? Now, if you go to the platform, the answer that you need to select is the second one. So if you tell me the third one, I will also take it as correct. But in the platform, it's actually number two. So here we go. Let's go with number two. Let's listen to the second conversation. Two, James. Are you going to James's party on Saturday? Of course. James always gives the best parties. And there are always lots of interesting new people to meet. It's true. I don't know where he manages to find them all. Well, you know what he's like. He makes friends really easily. He really likes talking to people. And he loves inviting people over. Uh-huh. He invited me for dinner last Saturday. What a feast. Yeah. He's a great cook, too. 
After dinner, I offered to help clean up, and he told me not to worry about it. He said he'd take care of it in the morning. He was like, it's nothing, no big deal. Yep, that sounds like James. The first one, the second one, or the third one? Third one. The third one. The third one, okay. The third one. Anonymous. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's the third one. That's correct. James is someone who's sociable and easygoing. That's right. Very good, everybody. Thanks for your participation. Okay, um, the third one is, which statement best describes Mr. Johnson? Mr. Johnson is someone who is egotistical and stingy, temperamental and unreliable, and sociable and easygoing. Let's listen to it. Here we go. Three, Mr. Johnson. Have you met the new apartment manager, Mr. Johnson? Hmm, yeah, I met him last week. He's a little strange. <laughs> yeah, he is. I'm not sure I like him. He's hard to predict. Sometimes he's pretty cheerful and talkative, and the next day he doesn't even say hello. I think he must have personal problems or something. I think you're right. And if you notice that half the time when he says he's going to do something, he never actually does it. He told me three times he'd come to fix the light in my kitchen, and he still hasn't done it. So which one is it? First option, second option, or third option? Second option. Second okay. option. Okay, yeah, it's the yeah. second option right there. Second. Mr. Johnson is someone who is temperamental and unreliable, apparently. Okay, very good. That's knowledge check 1.7 that you have uh, here. Okay, let's go with section 1.8, writing about a best friend. Now, this is something that you have to complete in your house. Instructions in the discussion forum below, write about a best friend. So, sorry. My best friend is someone who is sensitive about my feelings. She's a person who is very supportive and always listens to my problems. Now, you have the vocabulary to talk about your best friend, which is something we have studied today. And also you have the structure, which is relative clauses. So I want you to use relative clauses to describe a best friend. And also I want you to use some of the adjectives that we have studied today. Of course, because you're talking about a best friend, you're supposed to use positive adjectives, okay? Don't use negative adjectives, okay? Use the positive ones, the ones that are good. And uh, to do that, you have to click here on this button that says añade una publicación. So you click right there. there then you have the opportunity to do this. Okay, so you click, you click right here, you click, I'm sorry, uh, on this bottom, and then you'll have a chance to add uh, your text. That's something that you have to do yourself. So you have here, some people write, my best friend, my opinion, my best friend. Some of you have completed it. If you haven't, please do it, because this is part of the activities that you have to complete. So for the next one, okay, uh, lesson objective by the end of this class. Wow, we have very little time. We only have like seven minutes. Uh, participants will learn how to express likes and dislikes with clauses with it plus an adverbial clause with them, with when, I'm sorry. With it and when actually. So let me go back to the presentation right here. Okay, we did this. <laughs> Why is it, it appears twice. Okay, sorry. So, what are we going to do? We have the perspectives quiz. Listen to some common complaints. Complaints meaning quejas. Check the ones you agree with. Let's take a look. Do you get annoyed easily? Okay. Um, because we don't have much time, I'm going to read them. Okay. And I want you to take note in your house. Okay. For everyone you say yes, you count one point. So for example, the first one is, I don't like it when a cell phone rings in the classroom. If you feel annoyed by this, okay, check it. And you have one point, okay? So every time you say, yes, this annoys me, okay? Or yes, I don't like this, okay? You have one point. So count your points, and then we're going to check the results. So the first one again, I don't like it when a cell phone rings in the classroom. Like in this case, right? <laughs> People are annoyed with this guy because the cell phone rang. The second one, it bothers me, me molesta, right? It bothers me when a teacher forgets my name. When you say, okay, you, fulano, um, um, uh, uh, what's your name again? Uh, okay, so if that bothers you, okay, just uh, check it. The third one, 
I hate it when people talk with their mouth full. When people are eating and when they're eating, they go like, oh, okay, oh, 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 and they try to talk with you and they're still chewing their food. If you find this annoying, put a check. The next one, it upsets me when a close friend forgets my birthday. It is my birthday and my friend didn't call me, didn't send me a text message. I'm offended. Okay, so it upsets me when a close friend forgets my birthday. If this offends you or upsets you, okay, put a check. The next one, I can't stand, no soporto, right? I can't stand it when people talk loudly to each other during a movie. In my case, I say, yeah, I hate this. So I can't stand it when people talk loudly to each other during a movie. The next one, I don't like it when people call me early in the morning. It's like five in the morning and somebody calls you on the phone. Okay, so if this annoys you, put a check. The next one, I can stand it when a child screams in a restaurant. There's a little kid and they start crying. And the last one, it bothers me when my doctor arrives late for an appointment. You were supposed to see your doctor at 3 p.m. and the doctor gets there at 3.30 or at 4, okay? A lot of doctors do this, okay? But it's usually because they're very busy seeing a lot of people. So how many points did you score? Who wants to tell me? How many points did you score? How many yes answers do you have? Me? Okay. I have only three. Only three, okay, okay, very good. Does anybody have more than three? Okay, we're just going to uh, put it here. Ana Filomena, you have three, okay. Does anybody have more than three? Alguien que haya tenido más de tres? Somebody who scored more than three? Nobody. You don't want to participate anymore. Okay. Well, let's see the score. Okay, Maritza, how many do you have? I uh, I have a question, teacher. Ah, what's your question? Yes. Uh, what does it mean? Upset? Upset. Alterado. Okay. Or it upsets me, me altera, me, me molesta, right? It upsets me when a close friend forgets my birthday. Okay. And, the, and bother? Bother is also molestar. It bothers me, me molesta, right? Me cae mal. <laughs> That's the meaning of it. Dennis? Okay. In my case, I got five points. Five points. Okay, so let's register that. Dennis? Five points. Daisy, how many do you have? In my case, nothing bothers me. Zero. Zero. Okay, wow. Alejandro? Obsessed could be as, as, um, me saca de mis casillas. Mm -hmm. Something me molesta, like that. Me saca de mis casillas. Me cae mal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Me irrita, okay, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, yeah. Okay, and Indeed. how many, how about you, Alejandro? How many do you have? Only many? two. Mm. Only two, yes. okay, good. Yes, only, only two things, yes. Okay, mm. good. Jenny Elizabeth, how about Thank you? you. Uh, two points. I'm sorry, how many? Two. Two points, okay. All right, two let's points. see the results. Ana Filomena says three, Dennis five, Daisy zero, Alejandro two, and Jenny two. The score, let's see. From one to two complaints. This was, let me see, Daisy, Alejandro, and Jenny. This is this is the description. Wow, you don't get annoyed very easily. Okay, you're very easy going. That's nice. <laughs> From three to four, three to four, you have Ana Filomena. You are fairly easy going, bastante tranquilo, okay? What about five to six complaints? That will be Dennis, okay. What about Dennis, what's your score? Hmm, 
you could be intolerant about some things according to this <laughs> okay and seven to eight that's probably me okay relax you get annoyed too easily that's the teacher okay that happens to me all the time I, I get annoyed I don't say it but in my mind I'm like mm, a lot of things annoy me okay <laughs> So what are we going to do? It's it's pretty much time to finish, but um, at least we're going to start this. It's a grammar focus. Okay, um, take a look. Clauses with it plus adverbial clauses with when. This is very easy. Okay, very, very easy. It's not difficult. You say, I don't mind it, which means it doesn't bother me. It's like, I don't like it, but it doesn't bother me. I don't mind it when people talk loudly during the movie. So if a person talks loudly during the movie, it's like, okay, no problem. If they don't do it, it's like, okay, <laughs> no problem. So I don't mind it. I don't like it when a cell phone rings in the classroom. I can stand it when a child screams in the restaurant. It bothers me when a teacher forgets my name. It upsets me when people arrive late for appointments. There isn't much about grammar to explain right here. This is all you need to know. When you say, I don't mind it, I don't like it, I can stand it. And for the expressions bother and upset, because these are verbs, you say, it bothers me, it upsets me. And then you use when to introduce the circumstances that upset you. It upsets me when people arrive late for appointments. Just to give you an idea. Uh, this is from real life. It upsets me when people walk very slowly in front of me. Okay? Because I usually walk very fast. Very fast. I'm a fast walker. I'm always walking fast. So when there are like two or three people walking in front of me and they walk slowly, I get impatient. I'm like, mm. Mm. okay. So it upsets me when people walk slowly in front of me. That's a personal thing. So that's my case, of course, okay? If you walk slowly, no problem, <laughs> no judgment. So that's the idea. So what do you have to do? You have this homework and the homework is knowledge check 1.11. What are you going to do? I have some messages here. Uh, uh, Francisco says zero for me, ha <laughs> ha Okay, so um, what are you going to do? How do you feel about these situations? Complete the sentences with it clauses from the list. Then take turns reading your sentences with a partner. So what are those? You can say, I love it. Okay. I can't stand it. No lo soporto, right? So I can't stand it. You can say, it makes me happy. That's good. It bothers me. Cae mal. It embarrasses me. Okay. Uy. It embarrasses me. It really upsets me. You say, I don't like it. You can say, it doesn't bother me. No me molesta. It doesn't bother me. Or, I don't mind it. Me da igual. No me afecta. I don't mind it. So you are going to, depends on you in this case, of course, you are going to choose the right expression to complete the sentences. When someone gives me a compliment on my clothes, cuando alguien me, me da un cumplido por la ropa que llevo. So this is a very personal exercise. Answers will be different. You can say, for example, I love it when people give me a compliment on my clothes, for example. Or you can say, it makes me happy when people give me a compliment on my clothes. Pero si a usted no le gusta que le digan eso, puede decir también, I don't like it when people give me a compliment on my clothes. So this depends on you. Okay, everybody is different. So I want you to complete this. This is uh, knowledge check 1.11. Going back to this, it's right here. I want you to complete these. And if possible, well, you can complete more than those. Okay, you can complete all of these. And we're going to check them tomorrow. Again, there's no correct grammar right here. Basically, you just have to select from the list. Okay. Um, we're about to finish this unit, okay? And tomorrow we will begin unit two, which is section number two from the platform, all right? For the moment, we're going to finish here because it's nine six, okay? Uh, I'm just going to call the attendance one more time. There's only one person who's missing now, and that is Eric Ernesto Linares Aguirre. Is Eric here? Eric Ernesto, are you here tonight with us? 
let's see, I'm looking for Eric. I see Erica, but not Eric. Okay, Eric is not here. All right, everybody, this is the end of the class. Thank you for being here tonight. And I will see you tomorrow, okay? Good night. Good night, teacher. Good night, everyone. Good night, teacher. Bye-bye, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.